Hello, friends. Welcome to this time of worship. We greet you in the name of the Lord and send you greetings from the congregation of the Chatham United Methodist Church here in Chatham, New Jersey. We are grateful for Pastor Sharon, who will be bringing the message this morning. Let us be attentive as we listen for God's word from the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, open our ears to hear what you would say to us this day. Open our hearts to receive what you have for us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week's scripture passage is a great example of why I love reading the Bible. There's always something new to discover. God speaks to us through the same text in different ways at different times, depending on our life circumstance, depending on the situation in the world around us, and depending on what God may want to say to us at any given time. 
I will always remember the time that I made a new discovery in Psalm 23. Probably one of the most familiar passages in the whole Bible and one that I had read many, many times. And this one time, I realized that the first part of the psalm indeed talks about God as a shepherd. But the whole second half of the psalm talks about God as the host of a banquet. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Something that had never, I had, that had never occurred to me about the psalm before. And similarly with today's scripture reading. It's one that's somewhat familiar. It's called the feeding of the 5,000, although I might call it something different, which I'll talk about a little later. And there's a crowd gathered around Jesus as he's teaching. And he asks one of his disciples, where are we going to buy food for all of these people to eat? They're going to get hungry eventually. And the disciple responds, we don't have nearly enough money to buy food for all of these people. And then another disciple, Philip, shares that, well, there's a young boy who has a few loaves of barley and a few fish, but what is that small amount of food among such a large group of people? But Jesus uh, receives the food from the boy. He gives thanks. He has the people sit down. He distributes the food and people eat until they are satisfied. And after they're satisfied, there's enough left over that the disciples are able to gather up 12 baskets of leftovers. Now, the thing that I saw, the passage, the phrase that I saw in a new way this time I read this scripture is the fact that the entire event, the entire episode hinges on a small offering by a child. I picture this young boy coming up to the disciples, looking up to them and saying, I have a few loaves of bread and a few fish. I, I heard you talking about um, whether we'd have enough food to eat and, and how to get food for everyone. Here's what I have. And the whole story hinges on that moment. From that moment on, everything is different. We don't know exactly what happened and I'm not going to try to explain what happened to make that small offering enough for everyone and more than enough for everyone with 12 baskets left over, but something wonderful, inexplicable, happened as a result of that small offering by a child. Because of the significance of that one small action, I think I might like to call this section of scripture, rather than the feeding of the 5,000, a small boy's small offering. And I feel like we might be in a season where God is wanting to remind us of the value and the importance of small things, including small people. In addition to this week's scripture reading, recently we also have heard about Jesus healing a 12-year-old girl. We've also heard the kingdom of God, the reign of God, likened to seeds and to mustard seeds, the smallest of seeds, and to acorns. 
And in fact, we see time and again in the scriptures, in both the Hebrew scriptures and in the gospels, how small things and small people are valued and lifted up and are important to God. Just a few examples. Elijah meets God on the mountain and there's an earthquake shaking the earth. There's a great wind that splits the mountains and the rocks and there's a fire but God is not in any of those things. After those things have passed, Elijah hears a still, small voice, the voice of God. In the narrative of Moses as a child, the baby Moses is put into the river in a basket so that he can be saved from the soldiers and his sister Miriam, who's probably just a little bit older than he is at that time, watches and waits to see what will happen. And when Pharaoh's daughter comes and finds Moses, Miriam says to her, well, how about if I find a Hebrew woman to care for this child for you until he is old enough to be on his own away from that care and Pharaoh's daughter says yes and so Miriam is responsible for reuniting Moses with his mother. Moses who of course goes on to become the leader who frees the Hebrew people from slavery. Also in the Hebrew scriptures we read about the boy Samuel He's taken to the temple to serve God at a very young age. And as a young boy, he hears God calling to him, Samuel, Samuel. And after three times of not understanding what's happening, he says, here I am, Lord. And Samuel goes on to become priest, prophet, judge over Israel in an important time of transition as they move into their first period of kingship. In the Gospels, similarly, so many examples of the importance of small things and small people. Jesus lifts up the widow's might, the widow who is putting in half of a copper coin the smallest of amounts of money into the offering and he sets her as an example to others. We read about the one lost sheep, God seeking after the one, leaving the 99 behind and going after the one. A woman searches for one lost coin and searches until she finds it. God watches over the smallest of birds, the sparrows. Mary is quite likely a very young teenager when she becomes the mother of Jesus. Jesus blesses the children, even though his disciples try to stop them from coming to him, try to prevent them. He says, no, let the children come to me, for everyone must become as a child to receive the kingdom of God. And when the disciples are arguing about who is the greatest among them, Jesus puts a child in their midst and says, you must become like a child this child to be the people God wants you to be. As in scripture, so in life, small things and small people can make a very big difference. I thought of so many examples of this, but I will highlight just a few for you today. The first is this necklace that I'm wearing. 
this starfish necklace. It's a small thing. It was given to me by a friend the night before my husband Ron had major surgery a little over a year ago. And it had meant so much to me to be thought of in that way and to receive this. And it's uh, doubly meaningful because it references the starfish story that you may be familiar with, where there's a man walking along the beach that's covered with starfish and he's throwing them as he comes to them back into the water. And someone asks him, why are you doing this? You're never gonna throw all of them back. It's not making a difference. And he picks up one starfish and he throws it in the water and he says it makes a difference to that one. So I'm so grateful for this necklace and for that reminder that I have when I wear it. I also thought about our Cookies for Life ministry, something that we haven't been able to do, um, we weren't able to do last year because of the pandemic and I'm hoping we'll be able to do it again this December. Part of the Christmas gift collection sponsored by the chaplaincy of the Morris County Correctional Facility where we make and decorate Christmas cookies for those incarcerated in the correctional facility and also for the staff there. I once heard the chaplain there speak to a group of youth and he talked about how in the general population, the suicide rates go up around the holiday Christmas time. And that's even more true among the incarcerated and he said, you never ever know the impact of giving a cookie to someone can have. And what I took away from that is by giving someone a cookie, someone you don't know, someone who doesn't know you, but expressing your love for them and God's love for them in that small way, you just might save their life. And as I'm filming this sermon, we are in the midst of the recovery operations following the collapse of the condominium building in the Miami area. And I heard of two examples of ways that small things and small people have made a big difference there. A Florida state senator and her twin four-year-old children started making handmade thank you cards for the first responders and hand delivering them to them. They put out a call, a request for cards and elementary schools and camps began sending the state senator their cards. And before they knew it, they had over 500 cards for the first responders. And I heard one of them share one of the first responders share how they have all the tools, they have all the bandages, they have all the supplies they need for any situation they might encounter. But when it comes to warming their hearts, a homemade card, a handmade card from a child soothes their souls. I also heard the rabbi in that area speak. Many who are, um, who have missing family members and many who lived in that condominium building were part of his congregation. And when he was asked, what can he do for these families? His response was very simple. All we can do right now is show them kindness show them small acts of kindness. And that makes a difference to them. That means the world to them. And so as I close, I would share with you some wisdom from one of my favorite poets, Emily Dickinson. Maybe you know this poem or maybe you're hearing it for the first time. 
but I think it speaks to what God is wanting to say to us today. Dickinson writes, if I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching or cool one pain or help one fainting robin unto its nest again, I shall not live in vain. So I invite you to consider the small offerings that you have received in the past and express gratitude for those. I invite you to know that the small offerings that you are making right now delight God. God values them and appreciates them and they make a difference to people. And I would invite you in the days to come, the days ahead, to look for ways to do small things, to make small offerings, to value small people as God calls us and desires us to do. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gracious and loving God of all creation, we give thanks for the growth that is all around us. Give us eyes to see your handiwork in everything and in everyone. Gracious God, you spoke through your prophet Isaiah who said, a shoot shall spring up from the stump of Jesse and a branch from its roots will bear fruit. O oh God, out of that rich heritage from our Jewish ancestry, a branch has come forth in Jesus and it continues to bear much fruit. Out of small seeds come magnificent trees. Jesus, often pointed to small things and told his disciples, told us to take note of a grain of wheat that falls into the earth and dies. Yet when it dies, it yields much fruit. Jesus pointed to a mustard seed that dies and grows into a large bush that provides hospitality to the birds. A small bit of salt that gives flavor to the entire meal, a little bit of light that illumines everything. A small boy whose generosity and trust feeds the multitudes. Guide our eyes, O oh Lord, to see small things that are filled with your great potential. Inspire our actions so that we can make real the wisdom of Mother Teresa who said, our call is to do small things with great love. May we do that so that your love grows in and around everything we do. We offer you our humble and simple gifts ourselves, our lives, our prayers, our willingness to be your Christian disciples. We ask your blessings, healing touch, and inspired growth in each of us, in our circles of family and friends, in your church, and in the world that you so deeply love. We pray in Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we invite you to keep in your prayers the RISE team of youth and adults from our church who are driving today from Chatham, New Jersey, out to Steuben County and Allegheny County in upstate New York to work on homes and houses to make them safer and warmer and drier. Our church has been doing this for 40 years and inviting other churches to participate. If you would like some more information about this, perhaps for a church in your area, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us so that we can connect you to the RISE board. Our team will be there all this week and returning next Saturday and sharing some reflections in church next Sunday. Mother Teresa, said it was God's hope that we would do small things with great love. Let us go from our screens to do small things with great love. The love of God and the God of love goes with us and will be there. Amen.